Hi everybody, Lisa over at iRepair Devices and today in my workbench I'm working on another another Bose three disc CD player. Now this unit was dropped off. He's a local guy. He's from the north side. Uh, I, I am in Illinois. He's from the north side of, of uh, Chicago and he dropped this off and this guy had several things wrong with it. Um, one, it uh, needed a realignment which I already took care of. Second is on this worm gear here, all right, um, there is a plastic coupler that rides along this the, the worm gear. Well, that piece actually was broken. And I will show you this piece right here, what I am talking about. Um, all right, this is the guy that was broken. And normally, um, where's my tweezers? Tweezers. Seriously, there we go. Normally, this is a one-piece you uh, normally this is a one-piece unit here all right this is how it how it's supposed to be and actually it was broken and this is a normal uh, or I say I should say a common fault in in these units here now the third thing that is wrong with this and I have yet to done a video so I thought this would be a perfect time to do a video is in the front here Turn it around. I'll show you on this camera. Now you, you're gonna have to excuse me because normally I'm a uh, well, I am a lefty, so I'm gonna try to do this with my right hand here. Along here, all right. See if it gets in focus for you. Right, let's turn the overhead light on. There's gonna be some glare, but all right. So right here, we have three arms. This is for disc two three and four and inside here you see it's hard to see but there's like a little, three little components here and they're like little switches once it focuses you'll see let me get my part out of there as I zoom it in seriously you're not going to work with me today come on All right There we go. Um, you see these three little switches in here. You see the one here and then one down here. Those are for drives three and four. Up at uh, up at the top here is for drive two. And as you, as you can see, that white part is missing. So we got to replace that switch. So let's get started here. So first what I'm going to do is turn on my fume extractor because I will be working with solder and flux and you definitely don't want to breathe in any of these nasty fumes. So you want the fume extractor to suck away as much of this nastiness as possible. And so first thing I'm gonna have to do is I need to dismantle this whole uh, front right portion of the unit here. So just, and these switches again is another common failure on these units here so I've done s several dozens of these already but I've never made a video so I figured this would be a perfect time to make a video for you guys and gals so we've got three screws we need to remove from here Now there's several ways you can replace this switch. You definitely can replace it with everything intact here, but I, I do not like to do that because of the material that I'm working with here. Uh, the material I believe is aluminum and when you're working with aluminum, you certainly don't want to, and, and as thin as it is, you certainly don't want to bend it because you got some of these gears and these arms and levers that, that ride along these parts and if there's any wrinkle in the, in the material here, it's definitely going to throw everything off balance. So I like to take it uh, all the way down and totally off the board. So
Alright, then I have to work this bracket out because he goes through the board to the bottom here, so I have to release it from underneath here. So it just takes some maneuvering. But again, you gotta be careful. Alright, so we got him displaced. Alright, so now we're gonna remove this white white clip here, and there's a spring on there, so you wanna set that to the side. And off comes this top bracket here. All right, set him off to the side. All right, then there's going to be a screw inside here. Off comes this black bracket here. Set him off to the side with the screw. And this is the board that we're going to uh, we're going to be working on. All right. This little guy right here. Maybe we'll get him focused a little bit better. All right. That's too close. See, I'm trying to watch the TV and guide this. All right. So this is the this camera totally sucks, but. This is, the, this is the board right here. Now, you could remove the switch with everything intact here, but I, I don't like doing that. I like to totally remove this off the board, which requires additional um, uh, soldering removal. But you know what? I've done so many of these that it just, it just comes natural to me, so it doesn't bother me at all. So we've got to remove a couple additional parts here. All right. And on the bottom, there are six wire tabs that we have to add some flux and desolder it. So. so, get my flux here. One thing, there is another screw inside here that is that is holding on this bracket that the PCB board is mounted to. So we're going to move this screw real quick. And again, you got to be careful because the arms for the drives are is is like laying up right against this, and you certainly don't want to bend those guys. So um, screw is out. You just keep it right there. And we're going to add the flux. Now I can't show you this on camera because I am left-handed, so I need to have it faced this way so all right so let's and a part of the switch is laying inside here so as you can see this is the the cap to the switch that's already laying loose inside there so just move him out of the way Okay, so now we're just going to move the arms away, out of the way, and then I'm going to lay some flux down here. And the reason why I'm laying flux down is because when I add some solder to here, it's going to help reflow the uh, existing solder on here and loosen it up so I can go ahead and pull this off with one clean pull without worrying about pulling up any pads. So let's get my... Fume extractor close close in closer in here. Alright, and I'm just going to work my way just along. Let's see, I gotta come down here so I could see here. Lightly touch each of the wires, so and then just bring it up. As the solder, as the iron is going over these points here, I'm slowly lifting it, releasing it from the board. And you don't want to lift too soon because, like I said, you don't want to pull any of the pads that are on the board because then that's just more additional work that it's going to be required. So, all right, we're going to have to add some more flux here.
You definitely don't want to use a, um, a hot air machine. That would definitely melt everything around here. So that is not an option. So. All right, so we've got him up. holding you down here what am I there we go you just straighten out these legs and remove some of these some of the solder that's on here and straighten them out There we go. Piece is removed. So now for the time being, we're just gonna set him off to the side. All right. And I'm gonna get my holder here. And as you can see, the top switch is the one that we're going to be replacing. As you can see, it's missing. Um, it's broken so. so let's flip this guy over and I'm just gonna again add some more flux but this time I'm gonna use some um, some wick and I'm just gonna wick off the existing solder from here and then just pull the switch off so It seems like they used um, let it solder here because it is uh, flowing very easily, so which means it's not requiring requiring a lot of heat. So let's get my fume extractor closer here. So we're just going to go ahead and start removing some of this. There we go. The wick is sucking up the solder from the board itself, freeing up the legs. Sometimes you have to add additional because the flow of the solder just keeps filling up the hole because there's a lot in there so sometimes you're going to have to add additional flux to remove everything but and then you always want to find a clean place on the wick because if you keep using the same spot that has the solder it's just going to keep uh, flowing back onto the board so See if it's loose enough for me to grab. Nope. So what I'm going to do is just move this arm up to the side and then I'm going to take my iron and then hold it on each of these legs and I'm going to pull the switch as the leg becomes loose. There we go. Sometimes there's a little lip. Oh, there it goes. It just fell. Here we go. Here's the switch that was broken. 
There we go. That's the broken switch. And I already have the replacement part. I salvaged from a donor board. And this is what the switch looks like when it's when you got a good switch. Alright, so now we're just going to go ahead and put this in place and tack on some solder. And then go ahead and then reassemble everything. So let's just... You know what? I have to clean clean these holes up a little bit better when I remove what was left of the old stuff here. So the so the legs can go in here smoothly. So let's just get some flux on here. Still video? Yep. There we go. Okay. Now let's clean that up with some alcohol. if the holes look clear so let's go ahead and get this switch mounted back into place As you can see, the switch is back in place, so now I, all I need to do is now tack on some solder. So let's just... Again, too, you got to make sure it's laying flush on the board, because when that arm triggers this, it has to make sure, one, that it reaches it, and two, that it's, um, it's a clean hit, because if it's off the line, then it's not going to hit the target. And that's just going to keep looping because it's looking for that switch to hit. So, all right, so let's get the board clipped and let's now tack on some solder. Flip it upside down. And where's my solder? go there we go and there we go yep nice shiny pads this is what you're looking for and there's and when you look at when you look at your solder joint you want it to it's gonna be hard to see it's the top one that I did is it gonna focus probably not um, let's see. As you can see, the top over here, this is with the switch I, re I replaced. As you can see, the solder, um, is laying almost, I almost, res almost looks like it's laying, uh, like a, like an anthill. It's laying nice and flush against the leg. 
and it has like that little smooth almost looks like a mountain so I know that there's no um, gaps in there it's nicely sealed making a good connection so I don't know how how you know what what other ways to explain it but um, I always picture it like a, a, a an anthill that is just or like a volcano that it's laying like a nice uh, flow down you know down the leg there and everything so I don't know but so we're going to just okay the bottom is sitting a, a wee bit high for my liking so what I'm doing is just gonna I'm tack I'm tapping the bottom leg here and as the solder melts I'm just pushing it down Okay, I like that. Looks good. So now I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my area there. Remove all the flux and residue. So that's good and then now these legs are a little bit on the bent side so I'm just going to go ahead and bring in my soldering iron here and just clean up the legs I want to I want to straighten them out and again you got to be careful because there's wire um, it's like a insulated wire here so you definitely don't want to uh, melt away any of the um, the outer casing so, uh, so what I'm going to do first is clip away a clean part on the soldering on the wick here there we go and I'm just going to gently you know what? I'm going to first add some flux and what I'm going to do is just remove any of the extra solder here and I'll just add some fresh stuff So that's separated. This is separated. So then what I'm going to do now is, again, I'm touching the wire, but now with the tweezer, I am just straightening, straightening, straightening it out. All right. Okay, so we got that. Someone's at the door. Probably the mail carrier. Alright, we're going to slide this guy out. And this guy got pushed back, which is fine. So we're just going to heat it up. And when he's loose, we're just going to pull him forward. There we go. And same here. We're going to just bring him forward a little bit. All the legs now are straightened out and ready to be uh, soldered back onto the board. So, 
the next step is to get the board reassembled. So let's get the broken switch out of the way. Alright, so first we're going to put it back in place here. You know what? Let's clean off some of the pads here. Too much solder in, pl in, in place there for my liking. So we're just going to go ahead and clean this off a bit. Renew remove some of this extra stuff. There we go. Right. Now we're going to get the board back into place and then we're going to first put in the screw to hold it hold it in place there so when we start soldering everything is so nothing's going to move basically so we got that guy there all right so let's get the screw Let's tighten this guy down. Okay. go okay and this arm will click just want to make sure that it will hit when it needs to hit All right, so now we have to get these uh, six wires tacked into place. So, all right, everything's good there. So first, let's I have to just slightly bend some of these um, closer to their mounting points. There we go. You go there. Oh overshot you a bit and you go right there okay straighten you out a bit 
We got him in the back. That's fine. You're lined up, you're lined up, and you're lined up. Okay, so now we're going to add some flux, and then we're just going to tap each of these wires back into place. Again, it's going to be hard to see because I need to keep this on the on the bench here, and I am left-handed, so... What I'll do is work my way in, so we're going to attack him first. Okay, he's in. And then we're going to bring this guy. He's next. Alright. Get my tweezer in there, tap him down. He's good. And let's see. I have to... I need some solder. Where's my solder? Do -do -do. Seriously, you were just here. Oh, there you go. Alright, so we're just gonna bring some solder in here. And again, I'm not worrying about bridging because I can always go in and unbridge whatever wires should bridge. I'm not worried about that. I'm my main thing is get everybody tacked down. And then I can go back and clean everything up. So everybody is good. And there are no bridges. Oh, I don't like you. You're a little I'm not happy. There we go. Oh, now I bridged you. There we go. Good. Okay, and I got a Squeeze back into here and touch this guy down. Yep. I got the sixth leg. He's all the way inside here. And I need to... Just, let's see. How can I... There we go. Yep. Now he's tapped. Center one is tapped. Yep. There we go. Yep. There we go. I am happy with all that. So now let's uh, get it cleaned up. And then what I'm going to do is do, I'm going to do a continuity check just to make sure all the wires are indeed um, in place before reassembling and power powering everything on. So. Okay, looks good. So now let's get my meter here. We're going to put, put it on continuity test. All right, so I'm just going to touch the back here and touch each of the pads that correspond to the back here. If I hear a beep, I've got a connection. So, all right, at the pad. And then I'm, I'm, then I'm going to hit the other... Uh, lines next to it to make sure there's no bridging. So let's go to the second one here. Alright, nothing else is touching it. Let's go to the third one. Alright, it's touching. Nothing else is touching it. Let's go to the fourth one. Good. Nothing else is touching it. Fifth. Good. Nothing else is touching it. Sixth. Good. Nothing else is touching it. So, all the connections are good. So, clean it up just a little bit more. Alright. So now we just have to do the reverse of what we did earlier. Put everything back on. In reverse order. So. Let's just clean up this guy here a bit. Alright. So. You go in. You sit inside here. And you go on your pole here. 
You go on this pole, and you go on this pole. Once you're aligned, you all should slide down. There we go. Okay. All right. Good. That's in place. And we're just going to slide it down just a little bit more. There we go. All right, it's making connection to the bottom gear here. This is what we need. This is what we're looking for. That's what we want. So now we're going to, oh, before I go ahead, we're going to add back on this uh, black bracket here that secures the back of this PCB board. So let's get him mounted back into place. has to snap into the bottom board here but first it needs to get underneath the PCB board So let's bring, all right, let's loosen up this bracket here a little bit, lift him up, and then this guy will sit right underneath him. There we go. And now we just got to lock you in the place. Boom. There we go. And now let's tighten down the main bracket here. The screw, I should say. And now the screw to the black bracket. It had to, the back, the bottom of it had to go underneath the PCB board where the, the solder, or I'm sorry, where the um, back of the board was sitting uh, this goes underneath there, so. Alright, so. Okay, everything is tight. Yep. So, so far, we have the bracket back in place right here. The black bracket, and then the PCB board is back into place. Everything is lined up and laying flush on the board. We've got these gears already back into place here, so now we're going to uh, add this guy back on. And then we can't forget about him, this clip here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put him on now. Alright. Alright. 
see. Alright. slide in the place. I'll worry about clipping the spring in the place. At least it's in, in, in place right now. So now we got to lift up this bottom gear so we can feed this bottom one through the hole into the bottom. So we've got some maneuver, maneuvering to do. Okay, so that's good. That's good. All right, and then now we gotta lock this guy back into place on the bottom here. Okay, he's back into place. All right, so let's get him. All right, there we go. One more time. Boom, good. Locked in locked in everything's good so what I'm going to do before I go any further I'm going to just tack a screw in here up at the top here oh nope 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 before I do that slow down here we're gonna, we gotta add in a couple of springs here let's get all these guys pushed back into place so we gotta add in a couple of springs we got a spring here and you gotta remember which which springs go where and then there was a tinier Spring. Where did that guy go? Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. There we go. All right. Got the smaller spring here, and he sits right on top of this black uh, piece here. But again, I have to lift up the lid here, the top, and kind of maneuver him into place. All right, he's good. And knock down this spring. All right, he's good. And what happened, because I moved the top guy, this bottom piece came un undone again, which is fine. You just pop out the bottom and just guide him back into place. There we go. Good. Now, I am ready to lock the screw into place. one and then now like I says there's a spring in here but I now I have to work it around because it has to swing out here and go through um, has to wrap around another um, area of the gear so I just have to just He says these springs are tricky to work with. They do go flying all over the place, so you got to be careful. Because I'll tell you how many, can't tell you how many have gotten away from me. And when I go to find them, it's like, Jesus, did they go flying? So, um, all right, so, all right, so I turned it around, the spring, but it's not in place yet. But I at least turned it turned it around so I can get it, get the top back locked into place and then all I need to do is just push it over which is easier to do in the position that it is now so all I need to do now is just guide that back leg down and then just pop this guy over I need my other bracket here other tool slide it over And lock down. There we 
we go. Okay, arm swings out. So, so far we've got this clip back into place. We've got the spring that rides on top of it back into place. All right, we've got the top back on. Uh, we've got it locked in on the bottom here, uh, the, the leg that came from this bracket here. So that's good. So now what we need to do is add the three springs back into place. So, and then just, all right. And I know I'm not showing how these springs go on, but they only go on one way. So there's no secret to this. All right. Okay. So all the springs are back in the place here. So now let's, uh, oh, not yet, not yet. Let's add back the two screws here. Once the screws are back, back into place, then we can go ahead and power this guy on and see if it works. So let's get this screw. Feed this long screw into place. Oh, this arm popped out here, so we're gonna get this arm back aligned. This arm came out. about you at the end. I'm not going to worry about you right now. Let's get the long screw in place here. Okay. Okay. Now this arm did pop out of place, but it's no biggie. Just going to go ahead and release the spring here. All right. And then just gently maneuver him back down. There we go. Let's put him back into the place there and pop the spring back into the holding area. There we go. Arms back into place. So now we're going to uh, let's see. Let's loosen this up. We're gonna go ahead now and add these brackets back into place and power everything up and see what we've got here. Alright, so Let's take him off. I just need to line up this bottom piece here. There's my screwdriver. Let's just swing him. There we go. Swing it back into place. Like I said, these are these are common failures on here. Uh, now, could I have done the switch with the board on here with everything removed? Absolutely, but. Um, it'd be just too much twisting and, and turning in there with, with your, with your, uh, iron. So I like to just totally remove it from the board. Um, yes, there's X, you know, extra steps that you're taking, but you know what? It doesn't bother me. All right, get this leg in the place. Now I'm not going to put all the screws back on the top here, at least just enough to uh, hold 
hold this top plate in place and then I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and power this guy on and I will know if the switch is working by uh, when it does the startup process when it if it goes click click and it goes down to the second um, you know when, when it starts with the second drive that's the first one um, if it goes click click and then drops down to the third drive then I know it worked I know the switch is working but if it sits there and continues uh, repeating itself click click and, and and not moving then I know the switch um, is bad and that um, there's other issues going on so all right what's wrong with you there we go Okay, guys and gals, moment of truth. Let's see what we've got here. Now, it still may need alignment, uh, realignment, but we'll see. My main thing is just to see it pass the, the, the startup process. Turn this light off to take away some of the glare. All right. Ribbon cables in place. All right. Turn off. Okay. There we go. First arm click. It's going down to the second arm. That clicked in. Now it's going to go down to the third arm. Yep. And then now uh, let's see what we got here. Okay. So let's just see what's going on here. All right. All the switches are are working as they should be. So like I said, there could be secondary issues going on here. But let's just again okay first arm clicks all right goes down to the second arm that clicks see it's not going down to the third arm so which it should. So what else could be going wrong with this? Could be just a simple alignment issue.
this guy is not turning down here, so why are you not turning? Let's take the top off here. I may have to pause the video here because I believe my dogs, yep, they're getting hungry. And it is, oh, it is their dinner time. But I want to see real, if it's something I can qu quickly fix. Because that third, the, the fourth disc four, I call it drive four, that leg isn't moving as freely as it should. Almost like something is locking it up here. So, um, where is. Okay, he, he gets pulled in very easily. He pulls in. top off and let's just go ahead and power this up so I could see what it's doing without any covers on so I know girls I'll feed you in a second I promise I just hate to w walk away from something when I'm <laughs> Okay, the first switch is hitting. We've got that. All right, the second switch is hitting. Now it should go down to the third switch. Oh, there it goes. Now it's hitting. I think it was just stuck. And now the arm's going to raise up and down. Okay, so something was just stuck inside there. We are good to go. So now let me just um, put... Oh, let's see here. Let's put the top on. All right. Now you gotta be careful because I have power going to here, so I'm just wanna don't go touching anything on the board. Just wanna slide this bracket into place. Okay. All right. So let's get a couple of screws here to hold it down. Move him over. Okay. So now let's just plug it into the main unit here and see if we get audio output. If we get output, girls, you can eat. If we don't get output, you can't eat. No, I'm just kidding you. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, CD's in. Hold on, Brady. One second here. Okay. All right. It's not aligned, which is fine. Okay, let's just go ahead and do a quick uh, realignment on this guy. All right, what do we want to do? Um, all right. All right, we're going to do a quick realignment. So let's just take off the lid. And girls, I promise, after the quick alignment, we'll definitely go eat. All right, I hate to stop. We're almost there. We're almost there. All right. Let's pop this guy off here. Okay, boom. I've taken these things apart so many times, it's... Yeah, 
make sure I was still recording. All right, let's pop this side off here. Get the... Okay, where are you at? All right, got you there, got you there. All right, and oh, got another screw here. All right. Okay, unplug it from the bottom. Okay, slide them out. There we go. Okay, let's go back in. Everybody good down here. Let's make sure all these guys are sitting flush. Yep. 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 Okay, I'm happy with that. All right, so now let's get this reassembled. Side bracket on. Side bracket. Let's get the washers into place here. Okay. Crap, it popped off. Son of a bitch, where'd you go? Oh, there you go. There we go. All right. Okay, he's in place. All right, you're there. That's good. Let's get the back bracket in the back on. All right, you sit down in there. Top one. Let me just get a couple of screws to hold it in place. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna put it totally together, but at least hold hold it in. So it keeps it semi aligned and straight. So let's get one more screw in here. Okay. All right, plug it in. Again, it's going to go through the normal startup process. Okay, so let's get a CD in the top drive here drive two disc two and let's see if it spins well look at that it's spinning do we have output well son of a gun hot damn <laughs> finally all right now i can't play it too, uh, too long due to copyright protection but let's go ahead and fast forward through the song a bit Fast forward. Where are we at? There we go. All right. Now let's go forward a few tracks. 
All right, now let's get a disc in uh, drive three. And let's stop this guy. And let's go down to the second one. Okay, it's spinning. It's good. There we go. We're getting uh, audio. No skipping, no chattering. Now let's fast forward through the song a bit. I want to see how the laser uh, reacts to the movement of the uh, drive. All right, that's good. Now let's forward it through the song or a few tracks. Uh, let's go one more. All right, there we go. All right, let's stop and eject. My batteries must be running low on this remote. All right, and let's eject the next one. All right, well, there you have it. This was a very successful uh, successful repair, so I'm going to recap real quick what was wrong with this unit. Um, it came in with multiple issues. One, um, the worm gear, there was a threaded coupler that broke, so I, had a, I already had gone ahead and replaced that. And then I realigned the drive mechanism. Now, I did this uh, off camera. And then the third issue with this was uh, switch two on dry, um, yeah on disc two the switch was broken so I went ahead and replaced that switch and then uh, got it got it um, reassembled then I had to go back and reassemble the drive mechanism because every time you do uh, take it apart it will throw off the alignment so again it was um, going back and forth trying to realign it but finally I've got it um, back to where it should be everything is running smoothly so the only thing I'm going to go through and I'm not going to do it on camera here is just go in and, and clean the optical lens um, itself with some cleaner and just clean up the inside from the dust and everything and get this guy um, reassembled and sent back to the customer so yeah so this was a successful repair um, I, I don't think I've ever mentioned this in my other videos or I don't have it listed here, but I do take in uh, repairs. So if you want to mail them in to me, my number and email is at the top there of the screen. Contact me if you have any Bose systems or any other circuit boards that you're having issues with. Um, I do drone repairs, uh, MacBook, laptops, uh, iPhones. Now, when, I'm, when I say repairs, I am talking about logic board repairs. I do not do screen replacements. Anybody can do a screen replacement. Your local um, cell phone, your local kiosks can do them, but you just got to be careful who you go to because they could they could damage your phone if it's not done properly but my my um uh, background and and my uh job is i do logic board repair where i'm doing component level and uh so like i said if you have any uh repairs that you wish to um uh wish to mail me by by all means contact me and i'll go ahead and quote you a price uh, i am located in illinois i do have a quick a pretty quick uh return time uh depends on how many jobs are in the queue but i always do keep you updated so um yes this was a successful repair i'm gonna go ahead and cut the video now and uh, I, I will catch you all later have a good one bye okay why do i do that i'm like waving this way bye